In this video, we're going to talk about injective function, or we say one-to-one -one function. All right. What do we mean when we say function is injective or one-to-one? -one? An injective function, also called a one-to-one -one function, is a function in which no two different inputs are mapped to the same output. For example, I have a function f of x equal to x squared. If x is equal to 2, okay, let's say x is equal to 2, it means that um, f of 2 will be equal to 2 squared, and that will be 4. If x is equal to minus 2, f of minus 2 will be minus 2 squared, and that will still give me 4. So can you see that if we take the domain of this function as a set of all real numbers, okay, 2 minus 2, they are both real numbers. And if I plug in 2 into this function, it will give me 4. Plug in minus 2 into the same function, it will give me 4. So, if we take the set of real numbers as the domain of this function, this function is not injective. Because two different input values produce one output. Yes. That is the point. So, a function is injective if one input value gives a distinct output value. That is what we are trying to say. We are going to see later that this function is injective. Yes, f of s equal to s squared. But there will be a restriction on the domain. Just watch till the end, alright? Mathematically, a function f from the domain a to the codomain b is said to be injective if for every x1 if for every x1 and x2 which are members of the domain such that f of x1 is equal to f of x2 and by implication x1 is equal to x2. This is the definition of an injective function. We are going to take examples of some functions that are both injective and not injective. So just watch to the end and see how to prove for injectivity of a function. Let us show that the function f of x equal to 2x plus 8 is injective or is one to one okay so let's go ahead solution we can easily do this we are going to make use of the definition of an injective function this is what we are working with so two conditions must be satisfied f of x1 must be equal to f of x2 and x1 must equal x2 by implication now the function is f of x equal to 2x plus 8. So let's assume that f of x1 is equal to f of x2 based on the definition. So what is f of x1 from here? It means I'm going to write x1 in place of x2. So x, f of x1 will be uh, 2x1, let me write it here, 2x1 plus 8. f of x2 will be 2x2 plus 8. You know, to determine f of x1, we just replace x with x1. And for f of x2, we replace x with x2. Okay. Uh, if I collect like terms, 8 will cancel 8. So I'll be having um, 2x1 equal to what? 2x2. And if you divide both sides by 2, x1 is equal to what? x2. So the condition is satisfied x1 is equal to s2 and that is all we have so this function is actually uh, injective for this function the domain is actually the set of real numbers you know domain is the set of all input values for which the function is defined so this function is actually defined for all values for all real values of x okay you can watch my video on uh, domain of a function to understand what I'm talking about here. Let's take another example. I want to show 
that the function defined by f of x equal to s squared is injective. This is actually the function f from this domain to arrow. Okay, this set you can see here is actually the set of positive integers from 0 to plus infinity. Negative numbers are excluded in this domain. Okay, it means that we are talking about numbers such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on and so forth. That's what it is, this domain. So, we are trying to say that any input value we are going to consider, x1 and x2, must be numbers from 0 to plus infinity. Now, I told you earlier that the same x squared which we are considering here is not injective if the domain is arrow, like if the domain is a set of all real numbers. Minus 2 and plus 2, they are real numbers. And at the same time, they will produce the same value for f of x if we plug each of them into the function. So, the same values that we have, the same output value, but different input value. And for the condition to be satisfied for injectivity of a function, one input value to one output value. But in this case, two input values to one output. So if we take the domain of the function as arrow, instead of real numbers, this function is not, um, is not injective. But when there is now a restriction on the domain, like as it is now, the domain is now the set of positive integers, including zero. Then the function is what? Injective. So we have, we assume f of x1 is equal to f of x2. f of x1 from here will be x1 squared, right? If you plug in x1 here. And if you plug in x2 here to be x2 squared. So taking the square root of both sides, this means that, or this implies that x1 is equal to x2. And this is true Another interesting question let's handle. Let f be the function from this domain to arrow be defined by f of x equal to x squared. We are to show that f is not 1 to 1. Without even solving, one can easily detect that the function is not 1 to 1, looking at the interval endpoint. Minus 3 from minus 3 to 3. The elements in this set include minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3. That's what we have here. Okay, so this is the domain. These are the elements in the domain for this, this in interval. So, to show whether this function is injective or not depends on the elements in the domain. Yes. Now, solution. f of x1 is equal to what f of x2, right? What's f of x? x squared. So this is this is what we are assuming. We are assuming that f of x1 equal to f of x2 based on the definition for injectivity of a function. Now, I want to take two uh, values, two input values from this domain and see what the output value will be. And then I will know whether it is injective or not. Let's x1 be equal to minus 3 and let x2 be equal to 3 just watch what is f of x1 f of x1 which is f of minus 3 if i plug in minus 3 here for x that would be minus 3 squared which will give me 9 and you also know that if i use 3 f of x2 which is equal to f of 3 that will give me 3 squared, and that's also 9. You can see that f of x1 is equal to f of x2. That's 1. But the issue is that x1 is not equal to x2. x1 is minus 3. 
x2 is 3. Both input values give us the same output, but the input values are not the same. It means that the function is not, is not injective. It is not a one-to-one -one function. If you check, minus 2 squared will give me 4. 2 squared will also give me 4. Different inputs give me the same output. It is not injective. So this is it basically for injective uh, functions. But before you go, uh, I want you to solve this question and drop the answer in the comment section. I want you to show that this function, f of x, which is equal to 1 over x plus 3, of which s is not equal to minus 3, is 1 to 1. Yeah, I wanted to show that this function is injective. That is, it is a one-to-one -one function. Uh, what I wrote here, x not equal to minus 3, actually tells us that if I plug in minus 3 here for x, it will give me an undefined fraction. And you know that a function is undefined if the denominator is 0. So plug in minus 3 for x here to give you minus 3 plus 3, and that's 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. That's why I had to exclude minus 3 from the domain. The domain actually is all real numbers except minus 3. Okay. So, show that this function is 1 to 1. So, if it is 1 to 1, you drop it on the comment section 1 to 1. If it is not, then you write it is not 1 to 1. Then, we'll meet later.